Do you find it difficult to advance in macrophotography? Maybe one of these mistakes to avoid in macrophotography is holding you back from becoming a better macrophotographer. My name is Peter Bredaldam and I'm a nature photographer. Welcome to this channel. In this video, I will share five mistakes with you that you should try to avoid in your macrophotography. I've got a lot more macro and wildlife photography videos coming up, so please help me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel just down below. Do turn on the notification bell as well so you get notified when I post a new video. Anyway, let's get started with the first mistake you should try to avoid in macrophotography. So mistake number one is keep shooting insects or flowers from a top-down perspective. This is of course not a general rule. It's not wrong to capture images from just above your subject. Some images do work great when shooting directly from above. However, you will experience coming home with better shots when you begin to experiment with other angles. Get down on your knee or even down on your belly to capture more exciting shots where you are on eye level or even below your subject. One of the first images that I got feedback on from a, another professional photographer was where I shot a ladybug on a flower uh, directly from above. While the elements and composition worked all right and it was sharp in the right areas, it was just not very exciting. Nowadays, family walks in the forest often have me trailing behind the rest of the group because I'm lying flat on the ground trying to get a good composition of a flower or door beetle or something like that. All right, let's move on to mistake number two. And this is using too slow a shutter speed. When starting in macro photography and in photography in general, I was a bit of a pixel peeper in terms of I hated grains or other signs of low image quality that can come from using a high ISO. However, I missed plenty of shots because I used too slow a shutter speed to compensate for wanting to keep the ISO low for the best image quality. And this was, of course, a wrong decision. There's no need for you to make the same mistake. The problem with using a slow shutter speed is that wind and subject movement suddenly becomes something you need to worry about, forcing you to, to capture more shots than otherwise, hoping that just one of two of them is sharp. Instead, you should ensure that the shutter speed is high enough so most movement won't appear in your photos. For flower photography, a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second or just above that should be enough. However, if you can see that the flower is moving a bit in the wind, then you probably need to increase your shutter speed a little bit more, maybe to 1 1,000th of a second, and then test the result. Alternatively, you could use a macro flash system to get enough light to freeze motion with fast moving subjects. Let's move on to mistake number three. And this is shooting wide open just to get enough light. Many photographers start out by shooting macro photography at the widest aperture possible. Depending on their choice in the macro lens, this may be 2.8 or 4. You may worry about getting an underexposed image or keeping your eyes so low because you want the best quality or get a fast enough shutter speed. So you kind of sacrifice the, the depth of field, making the area in focus too narrow. In macro photography, at 1 to 1 magnification ratio, then an aperture opening of f2.8 or f4 is razor thin. This makes you take a lot of shots where the razor thin plane of focus is in the wrong place. You might not be able to raise your ISO above 1600 or even 800 depending on your camera and you may even not have so much wiggle room in terms of shutter speeds. So the best option to get enough light is actually to introduce a flash. The sooner you learn to use a flash for your macro photography, the faster your images will improve. As I was beginning in macro photography, I didn't know how to use a flash properly without getting hard shadows. And this meant that I was pretty reluctant initially to use a flash. The solution for me back then, many years ago, was to shoot with a more open aperture meaning that the area in focus would be very thin sliced. And too thin sliced for my taste today, where my understanding of macro photography is better. 
I missed focus on a lot of shots. The focus was anywhere but on the eyes of the insect that I tried to capture. Anyway, avoid using too open an aperture all the time. Instead, find another solution to get more light on your subject, like using a flash or LED lights. By the way, if you're new to macro photography, you might benefit from the free ebook that I share with my newsletter subscribers. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So let's move on to mistake number four. And this is using a tripod all the time. Don't get me wrong, a tripod can work very well for some types of macro photography. However, it can also slow you down significantly. Enough for skittish bugs to run or fly away when you try to position the tripod nearby. However, a tripod do offer excellent stability that is useful in many situations. For instance, if you want to create a compelling composition of a flower and wait for an insect to land on it, then a tripod is handy for making sure that your body doesn't move the area in focus while waiting for the insect and it also allows you to pre-focus. So a tripod makes sure that you don't miss the focus when the insect finally arrives. However, most times I find a tripod to be too cumbersome and slow to work with. Instead, you could find a useful technique for hand-holding your camera and using a dedicated macro flash system. Or a fast enough shot speed so you can easily let go of the tripod. Now, the key point for hand-holding your camera is to keep your elbows tucked in at your torso and also let the eyepiece on top of the camera touch the front of your eye socket or forehead uh, where you find it appropriate for you to clearly see what you're doing. But that extra touch point gives you another point of stability. If you hold the camera like this, it can easily wiggle back and forth while there's much more stability when you hold it at the front of your lens. So this way of hand holding a camera gives you a lot of stability. All right, let's move on to mistake number five. And this is giving up too soon. No matter what you do, learn from your mistakes. That is progress. Even though you might not see masterpieces coming from your camera uh, from day one, slowly getting rid of one fault or issue after the other will eventually lead to you capturing amazing macro images. So avoid giving up on macro photography, even though it's one of the most challenging photography genres. Giving up is the biggest mistake of them all. Actually, the first four mistakes that I talked about um, almost made me give up on macro photography. Luckily, I only put it on the shelf for a while and then returned with a better understanding. There you have it, five mistakes to avoid in macro photography. I hope that you found this video useful. Do remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel using the buttons just below. Macro photography is one of the most difficult genres of photography, so there's no wonder that so many photographers feel overwhelmed or despaired when they try to take on macro photography for the first time. Hopefully, with these five tips on mistakes to avoid in macro photography, you're a bit better equipped to handle the challenges and move quickly past these obstacles whenever you meet them. Until next time.